In tonight's news hash, news you need to know, stories from suspicious observers, beautiful girl by Dana, secular talk, the Young Turks, Tom Hartman, the Corbett Report, and many more. But first up, even before our production of the holographic universe is completed, the answer may come in. This report from BGR.com and picked up by Yahoo News Science Section, we are about to find out if our universe really is a hologram. What would be the most important scientific experiment of our lifetime is about to begin. The so-called holometer experiment at the Fermi National Accelerator Laboratory aims to determine whether our perception of a three-dimensional universe is just an illusion. Do we actually live on a two-dimensional plane as a holographic projection? There is a well-established theory that states we are indeed living in a hologram with a pixel size of about 10 trillion trillion times smaller than an atom. The point of the holometer experiment is that it will be able to reveal via the pixelation effect if our universe is indeed a hologram. It will achieve this by putting two interferometers really close to each other, creating laser beams and observing possible jitters where they interact. If there are certain kinds of wobbles in the laser beams interaction, that means we actually live on a surface of a flat plane and only perceive our universe to be three-dimensional. Next up, how to trash a planet and not feel bad about doing it. First, let's look at radiation. News out of Canada, first with Beautiful Girl by Dana. Please visit his YouTube channel for further details. I'm stunned that there are still people who do not understand that the triple meltdown at Fukushima in Japan is continuing unabated since March 2011. Radiation spilling into our environment, our air, and water. Now ongoing research by a team of Canadians in an outrigger, including a professional diver, seek to show that up to 99% of the Pacific Ocean tidal pools species are gone. And there's other things there besides what me and you found. We're missing at least 5,500 species on the coastline. This is a direct result of Fukushima. Adding that to the pre-Fukushima description of the Pacific, which was once described as an ocean so full of life, you saw it everywhere, all the time. And now it's a vast desert of ocean where one can go for days without seeing a living creature. Now we have a picture painted for us of global ecological collapse. Just so, it has now been recognized by the scientific community that we are currently in the largest global extinction event in 65 million years or more and this time the cause of the extinction level event is not an asteroid or even climate change, but simply human activities. Deadliest creature to ever happen to our planet. In other radiation news from Missing Sky 101, it is now confirmed that a deadly secret has been revealed. The annual venting of nuclear reactors. Our next segment follows up on our Methane in our Mist special report, live from Yahoo Live science writer Becky Oskin, senior writer, comes an article entitled Hundreds of Methane Plumes Erupting Along East Coast. It reads in part, In an unexpected discovery, hundreds of gas plumes bubbling up from the seafloor were spotted during a sweeping survey of the U.S. Atlantic coast. Even though ocean explorers have yet to test the gas, the bubbles are almost certainly methane. Researchers report today, August 24th, in the journal Nature Geoscience. We don't know of any explanation that fits as well as methane, said lead study author Adam Sharkey, a geologist at Mississippi State University in Mississippi State. Between the North Carolina's Cape Hatteras and Massachusetts Gorges Bank, 570 methane seeps cluster in about eight regions, 
according to sonar and video gathered by the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration. Ship Aquinos Explorer between 2011 and 2013. The vast majority of the seeps dot the continental slope break where the seafloor topography swoops down toward the Atlantic Basin. Tom Hartman also reacted to similar yet somewhat more dated news of the vast release of methane from the permafrost and is most likely behind the mysterious holes found in Siberia that had scientists baffled. Tom noted that methane is as much as 80 times more potent a greenhouse gas than carbon and is certain to set about a runaway effect that can be felt in a matter of years, not decades or centuries. The researchers suggest permafrost, uh, permafrost thawed and collapsed, releasing methane that had been trapped in the icy ground. This is a huge, big deal. Methane is one of the strongest natural greenhouse gases, about 80 times more potent than CO2 over the short term, and there are trillions of tons of it stored right under the Siberian tundra, tundra where these craters are located. If what the scientists say about the origins of these craters is true, methane has already started leaking from the depths of the tundra. In another story on fracking, Hartman discloses new scientific research which is proving conclusively the connection between earthquakes and fracking. As we have reported on recently, in relation to swarms and man-made quakes, such as those in continuous swarm in Oklahoma for the last two years that we have been watching them. Finally in fracking news, pipes. In addition to smashing to pieces any honeycomb pockets of rock beneath our feet in order to get at more easily the sweet oil and gas contained in them, we are now laying miles and miles of pipes filled with explosive materials as a more affordable way to get the gas and oil to market. War. General says that we should be at DEFCON 1. Everyone knows about Ferguson and the blatant militarization of our police forces, but here's an interesting fact about the U.S. and lethal weapons. It was also noted in a transcript from the Defense Department's website that we are in possession of the technology the conspiracy crowd has been warning us about for years. The relevant material reads, quote, There are some reports, for example, that some countries have been trying to construct something like an Ebola virus, and that would be a very dangerous phenomenon, to say the least. Alvin Toffler has written about this in terms of some scientists in their laboratories trying to devise certain types of pathogens that would be ethnic specific so that they could just eliminate certain ethnic groups and races and others are designing some sort of insects that can destroy specific crops others are engaging even in ecotype of terrorism whereby they can alter the climate set off earthquakes and volcanoes remotely through the use of electromagnetic waves end quote it's easy to look away, but these are the people today in our modern smartphone world accepting the show put on for us by the elite, but we should all know by now, all wars are by design and careful staging. Look at who is being affected here. People, grandmothers, mothers, and children. This is not a war, it's a slaughter. Living in the eastern part of any country, no matter how divided, does not immediately place a death sentence on your head. These people's only crime is living in the wrong place, in a designated war zone. When is this going to happen in your country? Please see what's happening and react. And to the theists who actually think this shit is necessary in order to bring about the second coming, you have a second thing coming. The tide is turning. When your sweet lord returns, let him find us waiting to yell, Surprise! We determined a new fate, and look at the garden of life we created instead. Can you see the pride on his face? Isn't that worth considering? And religion. David Pakman and Secular Talk Radio weigh in with a couple of interesting articles.
Let's talk drought. It's apparently so bad in the western U.S. that the ground is rising up. Some of the before and after pictures are so astonishing that I initially thought these images were faked. Folks, if this is an accurate representation of the situation, then it is a wee bit worse than I had envisioned. Well, how about the other extreme of this nature? This comes from the Baltimore Sun showing a landslide due to heavy precipitation. It's okay, guys. Do the jingle. We'll end on a positive note when it comes to news, aesthetic beauty of Greenland's ice swirls, courtesy of NASA's Earth Observatory. Okay, so that's our news hash for today. Um, we're a little late getting this out, so some of this is a, about a week old now, but um, some pretty good information that you need to know. Take care.